everyone. Hi, everyone. This is Candace with smartmomblogger.com. And thank you for tuning in to another one of our 10 minute webinars for mom bloggers, where each week we are going to learn from a smart and successful mom blogger on what she's done to grow her blog. And today, I'm very excited about the guest we have on today because we're talking about making money with your blog and um, monetizing it. So I know that that is a goal <clears throat> for many of us um, since we're trying to earn that income from home. So I'm excited to introduce Christy. She's here with us today. Hi, Christy. Hello. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. We're excited to have you and hear what you have to say. So Christy, let me just introduce you. She's a mom of three. And she is a blogging entrepreneur who has sold four blogs in the last 10 years, which is amazing to me. So I can't hear, uh, can't wait to hear what she has to say. And she now helps other moms build their blogging empires. And I just love that. That gives me goosebumps when I read it. I love that line. I love that. And um, her main hub over at livingfornaptime.com, that's where Christy helps moms out. So Christy, thanks again for being here. And I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Of course. Thanks for having me. As I mentioned before, I just love the idea of a 10 minute webinar. I wish I had thought about it before. <laughs> so, you know, you're trying to help moms. I'm trying to help moms. So I just love this format. That's awesome. Yeah. So I am going to get into um, how to monetize a blog, but I thought I'd start off with a little personal story about why I'm so passionate about monetizing blogs. So I've been blogging for a long time. I'm like the OG of bloggers, right? <laughs> Uh, I first started, I started my first blog in 2006, so that's 10 years ago, right? It was like the wild, wild west back then. <laughs> <laughs> I started a celebrity gossip blog because, you know, that's kind of what I was into. It was like I had only had one small baby, so I wasn't in the trenches yet of like motherhood. So now I don't have any time for celebrity gossip, but <laughs> back then it was a big thing. So I ran the blog for about a year and a half, almost two years, and I built it up quite, I mean, to a popular blog, I think I was getting just under half a million uh, visitors every month. So, you know, people like the stuff. It was it was doing well. But I decided after I had my, my daughter that, you know what, I just can't do it anymore. And so I decided to sell the blog. Now, I should mention, at this time, I had no idea about monetizing a blog. I mean, I think I was making around $500 a month on this blog, and I was psyched. And yeah. When you have over half a million viewers every month, you should be making more than $500 a month. But I just didn't know that back then. So well, I, that's a great point that you, I, I, I don't want to cut in too much, sorry, <laughs> because, because I know you have a lot to share. But um, so it's a great point you, you make, though, because even, ha even $500 a month is great for, for a lot of us watching. And so were you doing that by ads just through that, that blog? Because I know you said you weren't even really thinking about monetizing. So I know a lot of us just tend to put ads on if we're not really sure what else to do with That's it. That's absolutely all I was doing. I just had Google ads on the site and I was happy to do that. You know, I didn't know of any, I didn't know about affiliate marketing. I didn't know about any of the other monetization streams. So it was strictly Google ads. So I decided to sell the website. And so online, there are different sites. Um, the one that I use now is called flippa.com. And it's essentially like an eBay for selling blogs and selling websites. So I went ahead and sold my blog and I got a great price. What I thought was a great price. I was so excited. Awesome. And then one year later, the same person who bought my blog sold it for 10 times. What oh, wow. Bought. So talk about a punch in the stomach. <laughs> and so at that point, I thought to myself, I really need to get into this monetization stuff because that's where it's at. And so then I've just over the last 10 years have also started different blogs, also sold them. I just sold my last big one in 2015. Um, it was called Coupon Karma and I had run it for five years and it was my full time income. So today, um, in the short amount of time that we have, I just wanted to maybe um, talk about some of the four components of a profitable blog. So I have used these components to build every single blog that I have, and it's just um, a great core foundation if you have any, you know, any idea that you want to monetize your blog. And so those four core components are niche, content, traffic, and different revenue streams. Now, I'll start off by explaining a little bit about each of those four core components. And we'll start with niche. So my, my motto is to make a million, you need to help a million, right? Mm. And you can only know who your million are is if you have a niche for your blog. 
And if you look at any of the big bloggers, any of the six figure bloggers, they all have a niche and they've all exploited it. You know, they know exactly what to write, who they're writing to, what their market is going to buy, what their market does online. And it makes it so much easier to write content, to monetize to that audience. So I always recommend starting with a niche, right? So awesome. if, you're, if you're a mom blogger, go one step further and say, you know what, I want to write for uh, moms of uh, boys, or I want to write to moms who are working, you know? So you can take your niche and sort of narrow it down a little bit. It will help you in all facets. You can get laser focused. So the next one, is content, right? So there are several types of content that are great for monetizing. Um, one of my favorites is called the Roundup. So, and I'm sure you've seen this, the holiday gift guides, the 10 essentials you need for camping. Yes. This, is where, this is where it's at. And this is especially good for newer bloggers. And here's why. Pinterest is going to be your best friend in the beginning. If you don't have a huge audience, I always recommend my mom bloggers to create these roundups, right? So a holiday gift guide or anything that's related to their niche. Make a nice, long, Pinterest-worthy graphic. Awesome. Fill the blog post with affiliate links and put it on Pinterest. Pinterest will do all the work for you. Even if you're only getting, you know, a couple hundred visitors on your blog a month, Pinterest is huge, and that can drive several hundred to several thousand blog um viewers to that blog post. And not only that, because you're using affiliate links in that uh, roundup, you have the opportunity to make money. So that's, so smart. yeah, that's the content piece. And of course I could go into even more different types of content, but I just like to start with that one because I think it's the easiest for newer bloggers to do and it has a really big impact. Yes. Awesome. Okay, great. So next is traffic. And of course, as bloggers, we all want as much traffic as possible. And so there's, you know, there's um, search traffic, there's social media, there's referral traffic, and we're all doing our best to sort of, you know, get all the eyeballs onto our blog. If you want to get serious about monetizing your blog, the easiest, freest, cheapest way to get traffic is through Google search. So I always recommend that if you want to make money with your blog, you have to get serious about search engine optimization. Absolutely. There's nothing better than ranking for a keyword that Google sends traffic to your site and it's filled with affiliate links and people are just buying that stuff. Right. That's awesome. That's great advice because I'm just going to bump in here too because I think a lot of us as moms, um, the reason that we want to start a blog is to make that extra money. So we don't necessarily have, you know, a hundred bucks extra every month to spend on, you know, traffic or, or, you know, trying out these different courses or whatever. I mean, courses I think are important so we can continue to learn, but, um, you know, we don't necessarily have all that extra cash to invest in exactly. getting that traffic or getting other things. So that's, I mean, I love that advice about you know, Google and getting, you know, re doing your research on the SEO. And, yeah, and, the, and the, ni the other nice thing about Google is that Google traffic is you don't have to do anything. So for social media, you have to participate, you have to post, you have to engage, you have to comment. That's a lot of time. And moms True. don't have that much time. You can't, you know, you just, between the writing, your blog post, between promoting it, creating graphics, it's, it's very time consuming. So focusing on your SEO is sort of like a set it and forget it. You don't have to do anything else after your post has been launched, you know, to get that. Google so, out. so true. I love that point. Great on the SEO. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So moving on to revenue, right? Yes, yeah. So revenue's next. And so here's, um, here's sort of my advice when it comes to monetization you have to use different streams of revenue. No big blogger is only doing, is only using one stream of revenue. And yesterday I was kind of doing a case study for a course that I'm working on and I was, um, I was researching blogger income reports. And those big bloggers have over a dozen different res revenue streams. I was reading one that had 17 different revenue streams in a month. So you need to be willing to really explore those revenue streams. And some of the most popular ones are ads, of course, sponsored posts, affiliate marketing, uh, services, referral credit, um, becoming a VA. So there are, different there are different streams of revenue, and I recommend that you go with as many as you can. Awesome. Great advice. 
you can't just throw up ads on your blog and expect to be a millionaire overnight. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I 100% agree. And I'm so glad you touched on that point um, in particular. So what I have two questions for you because I think we're like almost out of time, but I really have to get these questions in. Sure. Um, so the first one was I'm just going to circle back up to you said niche at the very beginning and you explained that perfectly. Yeah. But but you did say that um, it's really important to kind of take it one step further. So if your audience is moms, um, okay, there's millions of moms out there, which is great, but we're we're all different and we all have different, you know, struggles and 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 goals and everything. So why is it so if you can, you know, put it in succinctly, why is it so important to take it that one step further? rather than just moms. I mean, you could you can get down super, super narrow, but um, why is it important to hone that niche? It's important to hone it simply for the fact because it allows you to do, to be laser focused in everything you're putting out there, right? So let's say my uh, blog is just about moms. Now there's a huge range of topics, right? And so let's say um, I blog about, you know, mom outfits one day, and then maybe I'm blogging about um, a recipe, and then maybe the next day I'm blogging about, you know, postpartum depression. I'm sort of blogging all within the mom vein, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's great. But it's not going to really resonate with a target market, right? It's going to resonate with a little, it's going to resonate a little with a lot of people. Mm. What you really want to do is resonate hard with a small amount of smaller amount of people because then those people become your tribe. So let me give you another example. Let's say, for example, you um, you want to you narrow down your niche and you only want to write for you know one voice. Now everything mm -hmm. you write on your blog is about this one target market. You become that expert, that go-to person in that market. And that's what you want. You want to be seen as an expert and you want to build your tribe. And you can only do that is if they feel like you're talking to them. And the awesome. only way to do that is to narrow down your niche. Love it. Love it. Perfect. Okay. Last question is okay. um, back to the revenue part. You mentioned the different streams of revenue. And I know this is going to vary depending on what time of or what type of blog you know you have, but it is there maybe one that you think is most beneficial for a blogger who doesn't have a huge reach yet or huge audience or tons of traffic, they're still working in that growing phase. Would you say just forget monetization right now? Or would you say, you know, start implementing this one since your blog is small, this one is going to be best. So, so maybe for like a more, like maybe somebody in their first year, their first six months of blogging. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. When you're starting your blog, you're going to have to hustle. You're going to have to hustle to monetize your blog a lot more than any of the medium size or larger bloggers. If you're just starting out, your best bet is to forget ads because you're not going to make any money with ads. That's just the way it is. Google is going to give you pennies per day. It's not worth your time. I, if I were a small blogger, I would focus all of my time at reaching out to smaller businesses, right? So Etsy shops to small local businesses, to other, you know, just other sort of businesses that are also starting out that might have a small budget and, but they're not, you know, they're not really worried about reach. They're wor they want to get in front of a specific audience. So I would spend almost all my time pitching small businesses, pitching small Etsy shops in order to get either sponsored posts or like, you know, some private ads on the site. Mm. Exactly where I would start. Awesome. That is fantastic advice. I love that. I feel like I've gotten like, I don't know, 10 blog posts worth of value out of this conversation that I would have read that I would have spent like a week reading through. So thank you so much, Christy. We have to cut it off. We're already over time. I want to just talk to you forever, but we're going to keep this short. So tell us, please, where can we find out more about you? What have you got going on right now? Fill us in. Yeah, sure. So you can find me at livingfornaptime.com and I'm Naptime Nation on Pinterest, Instagram, and uh, Facebook. So you can find me there. Um, but I also have an opt-in for your readers and that's six ways to monetize your blog today. Awesome. So actionable tips that they can do today to help monetize their blog. I love that. Thank you so right. much. We love right. you. Well, we loved having you on, Christy. Thank you again. Thanks can't for wait to, um, I'm going to head over once you have that ready for us. I can't wait to click on that and, and uh, find out more about it. So thanks again, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, moms, Thank you. for watching, and um, we'll talk to you all soon. Have a great one. Bye. <laughs>